OK. Hiroki, tune your body. So now how about the next fifth to this one is A and E flat with the first finger. So tune that for me. actually put the pad of the finger on the fiddle correctly, huh? adjust it in a natural way because the wrist is falling at this angle correctly. Huh? If, for, if, if I threw something to you, I'm going to throw it like that. If I want to throw it to somebody behind me, which is in the high position, I'm going to do it this way. Yeah. So the hand is falling that way. In how I'm visualizing this whole system of, of being aware of the instrument being tuned in fifth and developing the intonation around this logic, I, I think that the natural harmonics, well, I know that the natural harmonics yeah. all lie in exactly the correct parallel position on each string. So it's sometimes very easy, helpful just to, just to check other harmonics like that, which, which is always a fifth. It's never a third, it's never a sixth, yeah. it's never an octave. Yeah. So, okay, so, so we're kind of both a bit like in tune. So, so is, is that all that we have in fizz, just this open strings and the natural harmonics? Um, no. It's not, it's not. So we have actually, in reality, because everything is parallel and we're not, we're not a guitar, we don't play in frets. Yeah. I, I worked in these last years trying to, to, to work out why the natural position produce, produces the good fizz throughout the instrument. Yeah. And so perhaps we can just discuss this a little bit, huh? So let's go after we tune, let's go to an A flat. such a way that the vibrato is locked into this fifth and, and so this is the vibrato that we want to develop. Also if you play with a, in a syncopated rhythm so that we play each note twice we can make a continuity of vibrato through each note so that these fifths will remain consistent throughout the entire length of the instrument giving us a natural position in the arm and hand hand. Because all we really, the only contact with the violin, actually, in reality, is this left hand. This, this hand is in contact with the bow. This is, we've got to take care of these pads, position it in such a way that the violin is easier, not more difficult. And through, in my life, I've, 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 I've seen that the fifths become a problem because everybody's changing the hand to the fifth, and I think it's in reverse. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's the reverse. The fifths are, are, are the dominant designer of the pad. <sighs> Play to me once this, as if you're tuning the violin from a half step up. soft enough Better. so we know that the arm is, is moving actually this way inward 
for the E string and out, outwards for the G string. Yeah. This is for quite a long time until we get into perhaps four, fifth, sixth position. Yeah. This is really the logic of the movement and activity of the arm. We don't need more than that. So position the E string hand position. Okay. across four, st four strings as if you were tuning um, open. I haven't positioned, I've stayed on the G string side. So now my elbow coming this way. that the hand is active, the bow is doing, is making a beautiful sound, is opening the voice of the string, of, of, of the string which is in this area here, and not under the stick there, that's only the place that we open the voice which is there. And so when you play this one and you start here, it's like opening the Tchaikovsky concerto. So, you have to have this feeling of, of expression when you're practicing. This altitude, the, the first fifth, bravo. Okay, so, so now play the next one across four strings, which is B flat. So now play the next two or three um, chromatic notes by yourself. The fourth finger is not too weak, it's a little bit too short to stretch this one. So to find exactly where the fourth finger goes for this fifth, play without moving the wrist outward in this way to try and, uh, and achieve a stretch from this angle, which is wrong. We must stay relaxed. Play a natural harmonic on, on, on the G string, D and A. You simply can't do it. So, so you could, when you, if you had a passage that was... Okay, so now, so now we, we found the position to vibrate with sonority on that note. So we don't have to shift and we don't have to do all of these tricks. Huh? Because we know 
nowhere in the pad because the finger is now aligned because of the softness of the wrist. The other thing, wait, 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 the other thing I, 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 I want to uh, just reinstate with you is actually that you are holding the violin for this contact with the hand. You're holding it actually with the left hand. This wrist for me is too straight. Not so much relaxed, not as relaxed as this. This is good. that you won't have if, you, if you're straight. Let me come, come straight. Now my head. Well, it's, of course it's the same because they're natural harmonics, but in that fact it's more difficult. Yeah. It's more difficult because you pull, you pull the little finger away from where it should be, which is there, in a straight line going up there. As, as if there is no difficulty in placing this natural frame of the hand. But the natural frame of the hand is an octave. So if, 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 if we're walking down the street and we're not doing anything, we, we're not thinking about hands or anything, we're just walking, but this hand is in a position which when we put it here, in actual fact, sound for whatever reason, it's in an octave position. Yeah. Huh? So, so this fourth finger must find its place, because we have many difficult things to play. We have the opening of the Beethoven concerto to play. Yeah. We, have, we have the fourth variation, of this. yeah, third variation of Paganini, 24th Caprice, yeah. the very, very famous octave passages. So we, we must leave this frame intact and relaxed. That will be, okay, that, lift the fourth finger, can you feel the fifth underneath the first finger? Yeah. Okay, let me let me hear that fifth. Relax. And so place the octave. That's correct. So 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 play just fifth octave, fifth octave. So so this will present present an ease in the way that we we, 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 we deal with this. I think that, that we should um, practice a lot in first, first position, so I wrote quite a few exercises like... I mean, very, very important is when, when we're practicing these things, that, that we use the full bow from the heel to the tip without being noisy. It's important that our bow is always at the right angle in relationship to the bridge of the violin. So, place your bow on the heel. Uh, now, instead of, uh, instead of like many people do, and perhaps they're okay with it, I'm personally not okay with it, but they come, they come in a little bit this way, we travel too far with the upper arm here, so the, and now they have to go out to get straight. I don't like this, because if we were playing fast like that, Or if you will play. So the best way to, to practice to practice your bowing is, is to practice all of the leg artissimo throughout the bow and, and, and while you have a developing as a very soft wrist in this hand as well. So you apply to the fifth and then we start to play as we want to develop our sound over how, however long, can be two weeks, can be two years, can be a lifetime. Yeah. But we have to make it easier than, rather than difficult.
And so gradually, I mean, this is absolutely, this is a beautiful position, but when I first put your wrist in, I felt a slight tension there when I knocked it in a fraction. Play it one more time. So now you're able to do all the exercises the first before we start shifting from 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 the bow. Mm. Yeah? Yes. The violin being fixed. Yeah. Alright? Good. I studied a lot um, of, of Dunis. And you know, Dunis was arguably the greatest mandolin. Yeah, probably the greatest. I don't know, like guitar, mandolin, lute player that ever lived. I mean, I heard recordings of his which are crazy, playing Paganini on the mandolin. So, but this position is marked as great. So, if we took the violin from there and we put it here, we will see that we're perfectly aligned. Yeah. And that's actually why doing this road, for example, the daily dozen, when, he, when he's in this position with the stretching fingers, which is half the time he play the violin. And this position, A, which is the natural for here, not natural, because all thirds are in position B. We're doing this. All fourths are in position B. So, but we have to find now, from, from our book, when we play the fifth, we have to find something that actually is slightly less drastic than this and presents the hand into a slightly easier position to deal with all the other intervals that we've got. Okay, so let me hear you play now. Um... This, this four finger is, is, is very minutely out of tune. Mm. But it is minutely out of tune, so I'm gonna, I might practice that that particular shift for five minutes until my hand feels so easy that it's nobody will ever detect this kind of thing. Because imagine if we were playing separately on the G string and separately on the D string, yeah. it would be very hard to place it perfectly. Yeah. In a perfect fifth, it's so hard. So we must know within this minute thing where this fifth lies. Because, because you, you were not actually, the arm was not in position when you started, yeah. you're having to reach for the five, four finger. And that fourth finger is kind of miles shorter than the other finger, it's kind of small. Yeah. It can't reach all that way across, so we have to actually do it with the arm. But we can't just do it on the note, because we might be practicing that note, playing that note in performance, uh, I don't know, 132 to approach it in a, in a 16th note. Yeah. So. Position the arm for the for the dominant. This is correct. There's also less tense now. Yeah, yeah. good. I want I want to know if you have questions or question marks about anything, so that perhaps we can discuss it a little bit, or I can give you the answer straight yeah. away. So I find it difficult that. Um, um, before I get used to practicing in fifths, it gets really tense, especially in the fourth finger. Um, and, you know, after five, ten minutes of doing uh, practice in fifths, it gets natural and I, all the tension is released. But then when I first practice, it gets really tense. Well, 
In anything that we practice, it always takes a minute or two minutes or ten minutes. Some people need half an hour before a concert to warm up. I heard one student who uh, must practice his fist for half an hour before he can play. Mm. You probably know very well who that is. But that's, that's his way. He, he, won't, he won't feel warm until he's practiced for half an hour. But if something feels difficult or uncomfortable or tense, we have more than anything got to know the reason. Yeah. why it feels that, not just to keep practicing until it's right. Because if we do that and come back tomorrow, it's like banging right against a brick wall. Yeah. We're going to have the same problem tomorrow as we had. We're going to start all over again. We need to fix the problem. So in actual fact, the problem has got to be in the, in the arm position, in the wrist position, or in the pad placement. So, if you, if for example, if you play the forefinger and the, there is stress in the wrist, you're going to create, in order to get this forefinger vibrating somehow, you're going to use, you're going to put the wrist out a little bit and create tension to do it. Yeah. And that is, is wrong. Creating tension is wrong. Of course we use these muscles and tense these muscles for everything. That's something else because we, we're, we're, we're looking for so many colors all the time. But this is the basic, basic thing where your vibrato will, will feel not stressed on which, whichever finger you play. So for example, play to me, um, let's say you had a, a, a concerto that started with your first finger. Mm. And the G string. Well, of course, the Tchaikovsky starts with the first finger. So just play me that note. That's two notes. One note. Okay. So, in. so was this stressful? No. Okay. Now, we can't put the hand, but with leaving the hand there, which is actually slightly wrong for me, because I know that in that Tchaikovsky concerto, I've got a C sharp to play, which I'm in, in, the, in the third note. And that's got to be with the fourth finger. Yeah. So I'm going to position the hand, not just that it can play the first finger, I'm going to put the hat wrist so it can play all of the notes. Okay. And when you come to that C sharp, that C sharp won't be difficult because it's just going to drop into its natural slot. Play with, you don't have to play with your brother, just, just test, put your wrist in the position of play the fourth, play the C sharp. Look, by dropping the wrist in, watch, watch my fingers. This forefinger no longer has to stretch this way. Watch. In. Now I'm aligning it. I'm aligning that forefinger. And that's what I must do for this passage. Unless I'm just going note by note, which we kind of generally do. But if we're finding it stressful or we want to play a beautiful C sharp, then you've got to position the hand already to take in that first statement of Tchaikovsky. So position, put your foot, play, play first finger and, 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 and call it a D flat for now. And now play, with, play that, those two notes with fifth, both with fifth. You see, and this is why you, because the fifth is out of tune and wrong, it means the wrist is too hard and too tense. So if you sense, if you soften that wrist, that fifth will be in tune. No, you must, say, you must soften it now. In. That's right. There, that's right. Now, if you try to, if you try to, if you try to do it from this position, you won't make it. Because this is stretching and this is creating tension. Play these two notes. Until you have a sound that you think is going to be wonderful in the Royal Albert Hall. I don't know whether this answers your question or not. Because if you start, if you start to practice and you're finding it uncomfortable, it's because something is tense in the hand. Yeah. If you were writing an essay and you were doing this with, with, with the fingers, you and, and you were doing the arm was in there or the pencil was wrong, you they you would screw this paper up, chuck it away. Yeah. You would. Yeah. Because too much tension in the writing. No good.
no flow, no, nothing natural. You don't, you, don't, you don't think about cleaning your teeth or, or, or any of those things. You just naturally do it. It's a natural position. Driving your car. You don't have a car. But <laughs> driving your car, my car. It has to be the same plane your violin. You have got to have the same freedom. Look, I'm not saying, saying that everything is, is so easy to play the violin. It's really hard playing the violin. So, you know, we get, you know, if you go to the 17th Caprice and we have got this, these, all of these finger octaves and everything, we have to study, the, study these octaves for relaxation. There has got to be a way to do it. There's got to be a feeling that suits each player so they can present the hand in a very natural way. Otherwise, half, half, half the notes are going to be out of tune. Okay, just, um, well, I want you to think about this. Is there any more question you want to ask me about this? I think I'm good for now. Okay, yeah. good, all right, good. All right. Should I practice the Should I practice? The very first thing I do, or after scale, before each it's any advice on that? You have to practice uh, this is the first thing you do. Mm -hmm. Because it's a continuation of tuning your body. Yeah. You tune your body, then you tune your fingers. Once your fingers are in tune, you can start practicing the scales. Okay. Once, and applying the same ease and the same forms of the hand and the bat when you're playing your all of your chromatics and of course uh, we will come to thirds and, and or, or the influence that the fifths have on the other intervals okay. but absolutely first you practice the fifths i know that i think that i couldn't play a concert certainly when i was playing a lot of concerts i couldn't play without practicing only this, even if it was 10 minutes, and then I would feel fully warm. Yeah. A, sc a scale doesn't quite do it. Not for, not for me, because, well, perhaps, I don't know, perhaps because I've been doing it for 100 years now, it, it's kind of natural the way, I, the way I play. I think I always play in this position. But I think, I think that all of the well, as from, from what I observe, and, and, and the violinists who I talk to, the violinists who, who I was listening to when I was your age, this Oistrak and Isaac Stern and all of these people, they, they had no problem with, 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 with this relaxation in the hand. Yeah. And so, even though perhaps they were not aware of playing fierce, except occasionally, and for this few harmonics of the tune, I think that they automatically could do it, do it within five minutes. Yeah. Absolutely. All the great players can do it. And that's why in, 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 in my book, I put, instead of putting a picture of me demonstrating a fifth, or one of, one of you doing, doing the fifth, I'd rather put a picture of them, because they're actually in the perfect position to do it. So I think that they've, they've arrived at this greatness of playing, um, from being wonderful prodigies, they've arrived at that point of everything just is not as difficult for them as it is for everybody else. Yeah. Because they didn't get mucked up with different tricks. I think that goes for the bow as well, but that's another story. I think we've just simply got to make this thing a whole lot easier so that we can get to a much more important ingredient, which is the music. Yeah. That's all we're doing. For us, unfortunately, the voices outside of the body, bodies in here. And we've got to do all of this stuff, these hours of trying to train the hands so that we can get to the inner voice. So, I don't know if this answers your question. It's kind of a long answer. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that making life easy yeah. is the first priority. Okay. Easier. All right, let me hear you play. Um, if you go to, in, 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 in my book, if you go to um, Natural Harmonics, if you go to page 17, this is a very, very, very um, unpleasant harmonic to start with yeah. because of the angle of the pad. So start with the fourth, then the third. Now you have it. 
because you've got to relax the wrist for this harmonic. Now, with this relaxed wrist here, which would be the same as I don't know, in my, in my book there is wonderful pictures of, of a very young Yehudi playing and very young Michael Reagan playing and the hand is so beautifully soft. It's, you've got to have clean strings before it speaks. So, there you go. Soften the wrist. And put and put this fleshy part of the pad on there. Don't put the tip on there because it's not designed for the. That's that's too sharp an angle. Yeah. In fact, actually, Hiroki, put just the just put this harmonic on C. The wrist is too tight. That's right. And now, no, keep playing. Play this note. And now I want to ask you, can you feel the G underneath there on, in the third finger on the next string? Now, then stay in that position, play them together. It's there. It's always there. If the hand is positioned correctly, it's always there. Yeah. Okay, so let's play those first, first harmonics, huh? Wow. playing with 3-4, I want you to play with 2-3. Now 2-3 should be easier because the arm is going up straight but the, fl but the pad is bigger than with the little finger. Okay, so now we've got 2-3, same harmonics. And now I want you to play with 1-2, with the same harmonics. Okay, so now, so now you travel First position, second position, third position, fourth position. Yeah. Uh, so now I want you to play in exactly the same hand position. I want you to stop those notes. Play them as stop notes, as proper notes, with vibrato and and the same rhythm. D because you've, you've, been, you've been given these arti um, natural harmonics yeah. to position the hand with and soften that wrist. You yeah. see, when you tighten the wrist, everything, your vibrato, everything is unpleasant, yeah. actually. Just too difficult. Okay. Let me hear you play um, the same thing on the DNA string. Yeah, yeah so now... So now the angle of the arm is different than when it was on the G string. It was out here, yeah. there, you went the wrong way. Yeah. And now, that, now it's kind of centered. So you, you, can, feel, you can feel this gravity in, 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 in pulling, the, putting the fingers in the right place. I don't like this um, articulated bowing. I don't like noises when you change. Play. Yeah, and use your wrist when you change it, not your fingers, because your fingers go to different speed. That's good. Two, three. No, don't play with this bad sound. Good sound. One, two.
Okay. And now play me all of the all of those notes, but within in in the proper place, not in, in artificial harmonies. I just want you to play D E E do all. Okay. G N G N first this one. Beautiful bow, and, and, and I want you to change because I want you to practice everything. Relax. Yes. Yeah. If I would be absolutely hundred percent critical, I would say that that wrist is slightly too straight. I would like you to relax it even a bit more because the natural fall is a bit floppy. Yeah. Like that. If you look at a little child's hand, they, they, they do everything so good. The hand looks so amazing. Mm -hmm. That's good. Positions as we were taught, yeah. but which you don't have to use. Mm -hmm. So, so for example, um, if you play it from there, if we play from there, that's more or less as far as Bach is going. Yeah. Bach is going to go to an end mm -hmm. when you play that. I don't think it goes any higher than this. Mm. So we have we're, we're we're covering already quite a lot of notes with the chromatics and with the uh, with the um, with the artificial harmonics and with with, with this natural fall fall of the hand and the softness of the wrist and the correct feel in the in the fingers. Now I want you to play now. Play something very easy for me. Play to me um, a scale just on one note on the G string. No, not fierce. But using the same technique that you did with the fifths. Because I explained it to you, I you know why it's tense. Yeah. Why is it tense? You tell me. Because I didn't prepare. Uh, my arm wasn't on the fourth position. Position like the position of the arm wasn't ready for the fourth finger. Correct. And the wrist was also yeah. too out, which is shortening the little finger. Yeah. Again, position position it correctly in the bed. Yeah. Good. Also, this is actually a better sound. It's okay. You have, yeah, because you're vibrating in the pad. You're not vibrating that funny thing in the tip of the finger, yeah. which you, uh, everybody. I don't want to be. I don't really want to hear vibrato. I prefer you to hide the vibrato. Mm. Well, not intentionally hide it, but you don't. When when Pavarotti sings or the, the great singers, you're not. Yeah, it's part of their character that you obviously they have a vibrato, which is there, which is there. Identity, yeah. but you're not really conscious of, of it. You're just conscious of this. This is beautiful. Yeah. You have to be, have feel the same in your hand. But 
when you came from D, from from the, the position of the first finger on the D, which used to, we used to think of as fourth position, yeah. and you came to the C, it was slightly out of tune, very very slightly, and but we have to know why it was. It's always why. I think I wasn't thinking in fifth, so I was just landing. You don't have to think in fifth for this. You have this has got to be a natural way of playing. If I play to you like this, this is my first finger, yeah, yeah? and then I go here like this. What is wrong with that? Oh, the wrist is too. Ah, I haven't dropped the wrist because at this point the wrist is starting to fall this way. Yeah. So it's already not in the soft position. I can't get it in a soft position because the ribs are in the way. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. Just put your you know how D is. But yeah, you can't start with it with this kind of sound. You have to start with a beautiful sound. So this would be, if you were playing this now, this would be absolutely perfect, yeah. I promise you, if, if, you, if, you, if you do it in this position. So, so just one more time, play to me and, and drop the hand into its natural position this way, as if, like, like whoever designed us, perhaps it was something that we don't know about, but through the evolution of whatever, yeah. we arrived at this design, we, you know, we've all got these arms, and this, this is, everybody got the same design. So now, your, your design is not to do this with all of this baggage, but is to do this. And you did that. And when you do that, the more you practice your fears, the more natural this becomes. First position is not something which is easy like this. And you're creating tension to vibrate, that's absolutely, yeah, I think that if, if I think that obviously a lot of people do this to create probably a different sound, but this is a little bit like doing staccato because staccato, if you play, if you play staccato like that, this is not a natural smooth boy. There's a lot of tension in that. So if you play this like that with the wrist like that, it's a similar kind of feeling to the staccato. Yeah. So, so think of the that, that everything has got to be. Designed to to present those pads always in a, in a perfect, beautiful, sounding position. Single notes. In no single notes. A fraction more in, 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 into a softer position in first position. I don't know why you're starting on, on E. Well, start on E. Exactly that, with the same sonority and with this, with the same natural flow of both arms. Let me hear you do that in fifth, like we do in the book. Bravo, bravo! Your change is a little bit too fast in your bow because you're flicking a little bit with the fingers instead of turning around in its natural way with the wrist. More, more sonority we play. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so now we should know how to approach some of the complicated passages that we come across, which are generally hard to play in tune, or we, we don't feel as if we have enough facility to play with great rhythm and articulation. So I think that perhaps let's let's take let's take passage for, of Bach. So there's many pieces which are not so complicated. I mean, everything, of course, is very difficult, and we're really more interested at the end of the day in the music. But as violinists, we have got to we've got to develop a facility that can get to the logic of music. Yeah. So let's go with um, from Bach. This passage, which is very often complicated and difficult to play in tune. Yeah. Uh, so, how in the, how would you go about practicing? What would be the stages of practice for you? So, I will start with slow practice. But then so, what would you be your practice patterns? I will start with um, because the music is in thirty-second note. Um, I will start with um, maybe project uh, quarter note. Could do, or you could you could start with the two notes with, with with the syncopated pattern, which I like a lot because it gives us a very good rhythmical flow and also gives us a very good feeling in the right hand. So we can we can open the voice of the strings and 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 start to to develop this much more easily when we hear a correct sonority. So if you go with what I put in the book as the second pattern. Yeah. Let me hear how you play this, this passage in, 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 well, just to practice the passage. And, and remember, you can't, if you stop, you can't scrub away on one note until it's in tune. Yeah. You have to actually just keep redoing those two, three notes until you feel in the pad of the finger, because the muscle memory will absolutely remember where it goes. Yeah. I'm not saying that you, we can ever play the thing perfectly. I don't think anybody actually ever played 100% perfectly, is it possible? I don't think so. But I think some of them got kind of really close. Mm. And even if it wasn't exact, it was still kind of beautiful. Yeah. All right, so let me see you practice this passage.
Bravo, he's very good. So, okay, so we know, we know that your hand is good and relaxed. We know that your intonation across all of the strings, all the parallel notes are all in place. Mm -hmm. Minutely, minutely, minutely. I mean, like nothing. Mm -hmm. Nobody can pick up that. Because usually we're lifting the finger, placing on the string, placing it, and it's all this is added work. So, let me, what would your next practice be? Which is now actually very important. What would you do next? Because this is, belongs in, in, in a tempo. Um, maybe playing the, play the tempo, but with this. But then not as fast as what I'm going to play, but a little slower. Play it in a comfortable tempo, and let me see if you can play that in fifths. So and after this, after this tempo, what would you do then? Uh, in the tempo I'm not in. In fifths? Yeah. Play. Right. Very close. And if you play that two or three times more, yeah. this is going to be very easy for you to play because all of your hand is right, you know that your intonation is yeah. is in the right place, your fingers in all the parallel frets are correct. So let, let's hear let me hear it when so the tempo is um If I were listening to you play, I, I would feel completely comfortable listening to this yeah. kind of fiddle play because I, I hear the articulation in the fingers and I hear the intonation is, is pure. Yeah. Ish. It's easier for me as well because instead of the fingers going all over the place, it's with blocks when I practice with this. So, Good. Yeah, it's easy. When you say blocks, you mean what? Um, I mean, the hand is in the right shape. Yes. So, it's the hand and the arm. Yeah. Bravo. So this would be very good. And then you could just get on with, with doing, doing your simple things, huh? Yeah. In, in, in the shotgun. A lot of deep double, and the double stops, you know, we want to have, of course, do. Because, look, if we play the first note chord, if I put the hand in the right position, I have no problem with, with, that, with that D minor chord, huh? This, this uh, in the same way when we're studying, huh? Yeah. Because all we have all of this. And then as what you just practiced. Yeah. Okay. All right. So good. Let's choose another piece. Yeah. So this same hand position would apply to left hand pizzicato, for example, because we have got we've ex we we presented the pads in the correct position to pull the string, huh? Play once this passage for me in 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 fifths. Very just a couple of bars. It's out of tune because the wrist is wrong. Articulation in, in your left hand, so you can even practice play uh, left hand pizzicato from this position. Uh -huh. Okay, fine. Only, only thing with it that is not quite right is, is the balance between the bow. This one. 
So you have got to tap so it sounds correct. Okay, well, you can really you have to practice that part, Because okay. it's the only vertical one we have. Okay, this is good. Um, let's, let's, let's pick um, another piece. Um, what I do? Um, play me a passage from that is not in the book, actually. Play, play me a passage, because you know we're going to deal with anything that is difficult. We're going to deal with in this kind of way. Because not everything is difficult. Because once we've established how we are, we're going to play. It's fairly. It's a bit easier than it was before. Yeah. But we've got to come across passages which are very, very difficult. So, for example, I know for, I know very well that you're studying at the moment, you're studying Mozart three. what else are you studying? Introduction. Introduction on the book of Chosen, what else are you studying? Okay, um, like Beethoven, Beethoven. Okay, so let's go, tell me a passage in, in this, I don't know, what do you find difficult in Mozart three? for example? Um, the third movement. Which? I don't see that as being too difficult for you. <laughs> because your hand it looks nice to you. Yeah. After doing all this. So 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 tell me so tell me if if, if you if you were um, teaching in our in our system, if you were teaching somebody how, because they're struggling a little bit with this passage, what would you tell them? How to practice? I'll start with the syncopated rhythm. Sure. I know that you practice all of the other um, rhythms and fast and fierce and so on. Now let me hear you play. Right. Let me see, see you play with a little bit more beautiful. Let me see you play with a little bit longer wrist in the right arm and slightly one inch higher in the elbow so that so that you, the wrist can go out this way and not this way this way all right well let me hear one more time this this is this is the last thing i'm going to make you yeah. crazy with let me hear you see if you can be as fraction active in the left hand. I don't mean just on the notes, but with a little bit, let the hand help the fingers as we, as we practice with the sonority. Even when it's very fast, there should be some activity. And now I'll pick a place where I can hear your sound because I want to know how the fists are affecting your sound just in this lesson that we have today. Thank you.